One. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Ward, what's going on, brother? Well, well good. I got my I sent my charts over. Uh, something interesting is happening uh, as far as the SPY is concerned. That'd be chart number one. Okay. And it's been uh, quite a market. There's no doubt. There. And. And the reason why I circled that area, I listed uh, the trend closes and the tick closes on each one of those days. Yes. We kind of showed a similar chart. I don't know. Remember back in May, we were we were talking. I had a bunch of tin and trick readings. Well, anyhow, but long story short, when the ticks and trend reading, they usually accumulate. And it, all in the same area. Right. You know, it's not exactly yes. area. But once they start doing that, that area becomes support. Right. So uh, so my point is we're prob we're starting to form support here. Not saying we've seen the bottom, uh, the final bottom yet. I don't, I think last Friday's low is going to be broken. We'll, that's on chart two. Okay. But um, this area right we're in there, we're basically, uh, looks like about four, I don't know, 438 uh 446, those were all the trend and tick readings are starting to form in. So we got panic in this area, and panic only forms at bottoms. If you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. Yeah. Uh, so you, I, I, you know, I, it's the reason why I kind of got long a couple of weeks ago, right. I started seeing panic up around 438. Well, we busted lower, but the panic still kind of formed in this vicinity. So it's not a perfect science, but it does give you a real good clue of where sport is starting to form. Yes. And we're forming right in this area right now. And you know what's wild, so, Tim, is that, you know, when you take a look at it, when I was just doing, when I was doing the update, the, you know, so the, the spy got all the way up to 444.69, which, which was like pretty close to this 446 area, which was one of the last times that we were down on big volume, okay? The, the lows of 446. Now, right. that being Good said, what we're coming into, we're coming into 96 million and 98 million, and we're only going to do like 70 million. So that gets really intriguing. You see, you don't understand what I mean? Meaning, the, uh, the, the, the what, 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 go ahead. We're going to do like probably 70 million today in the spy, and we're coming into the trading day. I can't see the chart that far ahead. I think it's the 27th. It's the last. You know, the last two bars at the bottom, meaning they were coming into that with a lot lighter volume, even though right, it seems right. like a vicious day, you know? Right. Actually, if you eyeball it, that last decline into last Friday's low, you compare that volume going down and comparing to last Friday's low to up of, of the rally over the last several days, that volume's a lot lighter. And, uh, you know, I, I do have a, a software program that measures the up and down volume. So this rally up is kind of a sucker rally, put it that way. Right. Um, right. So it's, it's, it's running out of steam. You know, it's kind of a, acting a little kind of weird. But normally these corrections are, are just kind of screwy. They seem to go a little bit different rule book than what's, when the market goes in an uptrend. I think people are kind of just the motions of downtrends just scare people. And so the, the rules get swayed a little bit i guess you might say but well particularly but in the summer here, this, this whole sideways movement even though it's kind of sideways to down since about early august to the current level you know there's a huge a bunch of panic all over the place in the ticks and trend right so we we got we got we're, we're capitulating right now i mean so it may move, move a little bit lower with the market starting to capitulate so um anyhow that's what i wanted to point out there uh, we can move on. Okay. Um, chart two, I think we had this a chart, a similar chart we had on yes. Tuesday. And the only thing I want to point out here is the SPY was not down four days in a row, but the SPX and the QQQ were down four days in a row going last Friday. You can go back, uh, I think it was five years when I did this study. And, you know, when the market's down four days in a row um, on the QQQ and the SPX, the market's usually the market's lower 73% of the time within five days. Well, today is uh, four days, so it means down tomorrow might be that that uh, quantitative, I mean, be updated, may take six days. 
But normally, you got enough momentum to probably go back at a minimum, test last Friday's low. Okay. And we may be going for that right now. Um, and, you know, if you look Friday's low, uh, if you look on the chart where I have that, if you go back and look at the chart where I have all the trend and tick readings, Friday's low had a high down volume day. Yes, it did. And most high volume down days are tested at some point. Right. Uh, so, there was a, um, it was a 98 million trade uh, day in the uh, SPY. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to take, a, in my opinion, we're going to take a shot at that. I don't know when. Could it be tomorrow, maybe? Uh, next week, maybe? I don't know. And tomorrow, um, you know, we have that, uh, you have the Powell speaking at uh, quarter past 10 Eastern time at Jackson Hole. So that's going to be a big deal because it's, you know, it's going to be like, okay, are they going to keep going on rates? Are they going to get neutral? What are they going to do? You know, I mean, last yeah. year was when he had a, give the market a back uh, slap in the back of the head saying, hey, you not believe him that I'm going to keep going up on rates. And that day, in, in the next few weeks after that, the market got smoked. And then, of course, the market said, see you later. I'm not going to go down. I want to go up anyway. But <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, well, maybe uh, maybe that'd be the nail in the coffin uh, to form the low because the market anticipates all this news. So, yes, and it seems like whatever is is whatever that announcement is going to be is, is is probably already baked into the cake per se. Right. And we may get a short term reaction, but uh, intermediate term wise, I think we're looking fine. So I, I don't think we're starting a massive decline here. I think, and we're probably finishing up a bottom that may take another, you know, maybe a couple, maybe another week, maybe you know, market bottoms. You know, it's, it's hard to say. They seem to take more time to form. So and then, are you, look, are you looking for some Friday kind of, something. Tim, are you looking for some kind of consolidation after this? Well, meaning? Well, uh, what do you mean, me go down? I think it could be a base building is what I'm thinking. Okay. You know, okay. we go down and uh, say we test break Friday's low. And, yeah. And a lot of times these signals come on Friday, so they make you sweat over the weekend. Right. But um, right. Uh, then we may go up and, you know, I have a, a pointed out a gap. Uh, you see on that chart number one, I have a gap. Which is that pink area? I yes. Drawn there. Yep. And so you know, it depends how we test that area. And there's another one above it. So I'm I'm thinking we could flip sideways for maybe a month or something, and yep. build a base. And and uh, actually, uh, uh, I don't have these charts shown, but the bigger you know, I do a lot of stuff with the McCollum Osquare right and summation index, and we had a sign of strength off that. A sideways move from a year ago May to this May, and so we build a base of a year. So this rally we had off that base is is only the beginning of a of a bigger trend yet. I think we have further to go. I think we'll break new highs uh, before the year is out, but we may move sideways between now and you know, and probably into September, probably sometime. Sure. That's how I'm seeing it. Just stay there so. for a second, folks. We're talking with Tim Wood from the Ord Oracle. Don't forget, you can get hold of him at ord-oracle.com. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 241, NASDAQ off 195, S&P's off 43. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow is off uh, 248, NASDAQ is down 204, S&P's off 44. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood, and we are talking markets here. Okay, Tim. All right. Uh, any more questions on the S and P's or? No, I like I like this chart. I like this chart. We can always go back to it later if we'd like. But I like this chart. I'm re we're ready for the next one. All right. Okay. Go to chart number three. Okay. We found this chart in the past. Uh, the chart goes back to uh, uh, 2000. Well, it goes back to 1986. All right. So it's a long long term chart. So. Anyhow, the the middle window is the monthly silver gold ratio. Yes, and I got three different types of indicators to that ratio. The bottom one is a percent Boeing or percent Bollinger Band. Next one up is a rate of change, and the one above the middle chart, which is a silver gold chart, is this RSI, and they're all in the monthly time frame. Okay, and you need two of the three indicators trigger a buy signal and uh, and those uh, dotted vertical lines are the times when at least two of the three indicators or maybe all three but at least two of the indicators gave a buy last time this thing gave a buy was in uh, July of last year 
And I also marked all the times uh, when that signal was triggered, what the uh, the top one was the XAU, the monthly XAU, yep. and what all the percentage it did. And what uh, at least it did is 95%. The most it did is 383%. Look at that, huh? So anyhow, we, got a, cow. we got a chart. Pardon? I just said, look at that. Holy cow. That's pretty impressive. Hey, let me ask you yeah. something. Out of two out of the three, this almost looks like all three gave you a signal this time. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it did. Okay. Or, no, it didn't because the RSI on the top window above that didn't quite get down to minus seven or minus I, Oh, I see it right above it a little. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah, okay. it didn't quite do it. But some of them did. The one previous one did. Yep. Back at the, um, uh, well, whatever that decline was, all yes. three of them got a bicycle. And the thing rocketed up. So anyhow, just two of the last three did. And so uh, anyhow, all of them at least round off numbers. You know, all of them at least did 100%. So it basically, it was triggered at around 90 on the uh, XAU. And right now, we're around uh, 117 area or somewhere in there. So we're about 40%. So this thing's still on a buy signal. So anyhow, because it should get at least 180 Okay. So even though the market is uh, on a monthly time frame, it's been pretty much moving sideways over the last several months. So let's look to chart four. Okay. So now this is a smaller time frame. Well, can and, we uh, just, uh, can I just go back uh, to this other chart again, uh, just for a second? Because, like, that would be pretty cool. I mean, because if you're saying 180, that would bring us to all time highs. The all time high thus far on the XAU is 171. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what charts suggest. So, right. you know, uh, if you so yeah, I'm thinking we're going to break new highs, you right? Know, probably within the next twelve months. That's kind of what I, I just wanted to go. Signals, over. okay, uh, can last a while. No, I'm with so, you. Okay, I got it. Okay, so now let's go uh, to that chart number yeah. four. Okay. Yeah, chart number four. So that, this breaks it down into a shorter time frame, and the the top window is the cumulative up down volume percent. So that's all that is. And the middle window is GDX. And if we get down, we can talk about the two bottom uh, two bottom indicators. But what I found out worked the best is the up-down volume, cumulative up-down volume percent for GDX. Yep. And I circled um, when those in, and I did a Bollinger Band on it, and I circled the times when that indicator, cumulative up-down volume, went above the Bollinger Band, that's in blue, when I blow a Bollinger Band, that's in red, and da da da. Well, today it's above the mid Bollinger Band, but sometimes you get a little hesitation there. Sometimes you don't. But uh, right now, we're basically, as of today, we just we're above the mid Bollinger Band. What well, this is not on the close. I don't know what the close is going to be, but we're off a close. So usually, this indicator usually doesn't whip you around. It is pretty straightforward when it, when it goes up it goes up for a while when it goes down it goes down for a while you know it's so uh, cool I man mean, do you remember but, i mean i know you know because actually when you were on with me we had joe granville on too i mean because when you're doing the up down volume that's really on balance volume right because that's uh do you, do you could it be the same thing you know it could be i don't know actually uh, well, do you, do you, do you, and Joe do you, Granville created that indicator right do you add the volume on an up day and, and subtract on a down day uh, I actually, I don't know what the cumulative, how they, they perform it, you know, I, um, so I don't know. I actually don't know. Okay. That's a good question. Um, this indicator came in this, this way. I didn't actually look into I, it, I how got it, it okay. formed or anything. Okay. I probably just could like do a study okay. on it and I get it. figure okay. out what it does, but I think it, it just adds, uh, yeah, it could be a, a on balance volume, but not for sure. But, uh. But anyhow, you can see how it works. Yes, if no, look, for sure. You know, it it catches the trend, and actually, if you look at that top in in uh, April, yes, you know, it closed below that. It didn't. It never closed, even though the market GDX rallied into May. There, that indicator stayed below the mo a bin, bo a mid Bollinger Band. I thought that was pretty good. Right. So saying that we're um, going lower. Yeah. Right. 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 It, yeah. I made a lower. So actually, if you draw, you know, if, if you do divergences, you draw trend lines on that yep. GDX. You, and anyhow, so and if and, and folks, you know, it, let Tim just one second. I don't mean to interrupt you, ahead. but folks, if you're looking at this chart when Tim's talking, you know, you got the the GDX and you get the top line. 
He's talking about this middle line here. That's the mid of the Bollinger Band. Then you have the bottom, just so you can understand how what we're talking about here. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so anyhow, so uh, it gave a buy back in uh, July. I gave a sell in oh, August 1st. Yeah. Now. And now we're back into, you know, pit, uh, you know, possibly a buy uh, uh, right now. So this thing coming off the bottom here, it, to me, it looks it looks for real. So, yeah. Uh, hey, I'm going to put. I, I'm going to put. Surprised how much it backed off, but I'm going to put um, this up right. Yeah, let me see. I just put this up. You can see we're right. Oh, look at that, man. We're right on it right now. We we actually yeah, kissed we're right it. Right on it. Yeah, we kissed and it. If you look at the price on, uh, you know, if you go and look on that indicator. Well, the price is uh, minus six six eight point eight two. The mid Bollinger Band is six five six point seven six. When I did this, yeah. So right now, when I made that chart, it was above the mid Bollinger Band. Wow! So uh, pretty cool. Uh, so man. yeah, yeah. And you see the volume coming off that low. You know, I, oh, low I loved it. GDX. I loved it. No, the big time. Yeah. yeah. So it, it could be a real move. So we'll have to wait and see. We yeah, can we flip to. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, but well, I'm going to uh, take you for one more segment too, anyway. So uh, we can go to the next. All one. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll flip to chart chart uh, number five. Okay. And uh, we probably won't have a lot of time to talk about. This is kind of a a different chart. The bottom window is again the up down volume advanced client indicator. Uh, but I took a instead of cumulative, I did a uh, 18 day average. And it seems to work out pretty well. Okay, here, just hold and that thought, Tim. Just hold that thought. We get a quick break. We're coming right back. And you talk about bisecting and dissecting markets, folks. You hear it. He's bisecting and dissecting them, baby. Dow, Dow Industrials down 279. Nasdaq's off 218. S&Ps are off 47. Tim and I are going to come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. We're talking with Tim Ord, and we have the uh, markets. Uh, Dow's down 290. Nasdaq's off uh, 220. S&Ps are off 49. And we have chart number five up here, Tim. All right, chart number five. You know, the previous chart was a cumulative up-down volume percent for GDX. Uh, this one on the bottom window is the 18-day um, average of the up-down volume uh, percent for GDX. So it's, a, it's kind of a different spin. I've, I've used a lot of different moving averages. For some reason, 18-day is it seems to work the best. Okay. But in in general, when this indicator is above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. When it's below minus 10, the market's in a downtrend. And all that blue shaded area is when the up-down volume advanced client indicators, 18-day average, is of above uh, minus 10. So minus 10 seems to be the magic number. Yes. And when I did this chart, it, it was a minus 17 and a half. Okay. So, uh, this one's below, but the previous one is above. So, you know, which one leads, I don't know, but um, it's it's going up uh, along with so the market probably would need to keep going higher here to get that indicator above uh, minus 10. When it does, then... Yeah, we need a couple more good days. 10, don't know. So it looks like we need a couple more good days in the uh, GDX, right? Because that, that would bring it above the mid-Bollinger Band number one. And then, more than likely, you know, a couple of good days would bring this above 10, right? Probably. Yeah, above 10. So it's kind of, if you look at the last signal, um, you know, it gave a buy signal kind of 1st July, just like the uh, um, cumulative up-down volume did. And that, and actually, Mark went back down and gave a sell signal. So you kind of bought and sold about the same level, yeah. which is kind of unusual. It usually gets you out pretty good close to the highs. This last particular time, it went back down. And went through a sell signal, and now it hasn't quite got a buy signal yet, but it's going in the right direction, I guess you might say. So, but uh, the signals are usually pretty good. I mean, um, over time, it has, it has worked well. So, but you know, if you use several different indicators uh, on this up-down volume type indicators, you know, if you get two or three, um, right now we got one out of two you know, your chances of success really increase. So I'm thinking we're about ready to start a rally. Yes. And, and the only reason why I think this market has a lot further to go is on page three, which is uh, that percent volume thing, or not percent volume, but the uh, monthly 
gold silver ratio right uh, gave a buy and that that signal in my opinion is still incomplete until we get above 180 and that may you know take another you know i don't know six months a year or so yes. the bigger trends up the short-term trend in my opinion is starting to turn bullish here um and one is already bullish and if you get two your chances of success is really increased so i think that other buy signal is probably um coming here shortly in august i think uh uh gold market is usually a good time july through august all the way in october so seasonality wise we're actually pretty good for gold and gold stocks too so um hey, you know, know it looks pretty good yes so. no big time i'm with you you know it's interesting tim <clears throat> this mid bone japan that you're on to is really a trip man i did i've been yeah i've been pulling a few i mean i have the spy up here right now right and you know, I mean, you know, you got whipped around a little maybe three months ago for a day or two. But, man, this thing just went all the way up. And, yeah, now it turned. It, it almost, it tried to get above it, I guess, this morning. And then it failed. Yeah. Yeah, it's failed. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk more about that if you want. Because uh, uh, if you really want accuracy over time, you do it on a weekly on a weekly, and, okay. Yeah, and that'll catch you all the major moves, up or down, period. That's pretty amazing. I, I, I went all the way back to 1980 and, and did a, a, a study on it, you know, a personal study where right. you know, I'm pretty, you, you see the kind of charts I do, I, I look at all the weird stuff and... and uh, oh, listen, and, I know, man. That's why I love you so much. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've learned more off you, you know, 20 years ago than I probably you know, learned in the last, you know, 20 years. Yeah, there's no right. doubt, man. Then, yeah. then, uh, well, we'll see what the next 20 years brings. So. That's right. So, That's yeah. right. Pretty wild. So, well, I'll tell uh, you, this has been... So, anyhow. Yep. It, it looks all pretty good. So, anyhow, we got a lot of stuff going on probably in the next couple of weeks. And I think... Uh, you know, I think that signal will probably generate in GDX because one's already doing it. It's a matter of a couple others kick in, then we we'll probably got a rally there. And then I'm thinking, you know, uh, the SPY, SPX is probably, even though we may go back to test last Friday's low, my opinion, that's probably going to be it because right. we already got quite a bit of panic over the last couple of weeks. And there's that 10 day trend I always talk about. Yes. You know, and right now, I think it was 1.09 as of yesterday. Usually, if you get around 1.2 and higher, that's where the intermediate term lows form. Okay. So that's the reason why I said the market may flip sideways here until that 10-day trend gets up around 1.2. Well, to get to 1.2, you're going to need some more, you know, high trend closes over the next, you know, week or two to get that average above 1.2. That's the only reason why I thought we might flip sideways. I see. You know no. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because we need to... You know, it gets more panic days, probably in this region we're in right now. But, you know, some stuff thrown around a little bit to get that trend. Then once that trend's above, you know, 1.2, then that's where the major bottoms form. Yeah, and so, as, we're, as we're speaking right now, you know, there's going to be, coming into this close is going to be interesting because, you know, the S&Ps just took, a you know, another leg uh, 10 points down um, in about a heart, heartbeat, you know. So yeah, I suspect that yeah, will definitely... Was, was, yeah, what's interesting, yesterday we had a 1.89 trend, um, and the market was up. Well, yes. I thought that was kind of strange. That's usually only happens in down days. So, but anyhow, you know, it is what it is. Whatever those trend readings come in at, you know, we're, we're, so, you know, if we do crash tomorrow, we break below last Friday's low, and the, and the, we get a bullish combination ticks and trend, and we break last Friday's low on, say, at least 10 percent lighter volume. To me, that would be a short-term setup, and probably uh, could end up with a buy signal. Yeah, and just enough not, fear in the market, not right? A long term. Pardon? There'll be just enough fear in the market. Right, fear in the market to probably get up to where you know the gap we had here. Uh, if you look on that chart on pay or on. Chart one, yes, that that uh, pink area. I got drawn. That's where gaps, uh, the two gaps are open. Yep, I see it. And I, I thought, well, if we get, we do, 
you know, this is all speculation. Oh, right yeah. Now. No, no, I don't I'm have the signal to do it, but it right. could develop or last Friday's low could be tested. If it's tested on a lighter volume and the ticks and trend are still high enough, we may get a rally to that gap and we may find resistance to that gap. Um, so I don't know. It, it's, I think it's going to be a trading range. Exactly. So, now, it's, it's a nice one, though. It's a big one, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we'll listen, we'll man. The numbers as, when they come in. So we'll see how it goes. It's always a pleasure, Tim. You have a, a great okay. weekend, a safe weekend. We uh, look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. And uh, stay safe, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.